morning, everyone. David Yarbrough, Tulsa Ford at Katusa. I hope you realize how unique this is. Uh, this is not standard in the industry that a coalition from the states of Arkansas and Oklahoma, people who compete for business like Port 33 and Port of Catoosa, we join hands and we work on the, on the, on the river system. Uh, it's that important. I, I drove five hours to be here to speak to you for 10 minutes because it's important and I want to tell you some stuff this morning. Um, and and Dee Dee drove, drove farther than I did. So we're passionate about this. We need your help. We need your support. I know that most of you are singing in the choir. You understand these benefits. I know there's some elected officials represented here. Um, so this is why we do this. Uh, so I'm going to talk just a few minutes about the other business lines because you need to understand there is a mentality in our nation that this is a, a Fulton's folly, if you will, a modern day waste, money, bad money after bad money. The system cost $1.2 million in the 1960s to construct a navigable waterway from the Mississippi River to Tulsa, Oklahoma, $1.2 billion. The largest civil works project ever undertaken by the Corps of Engineers. And we encounter people weekly that come out for tours and stuff that, that shake their heads and go, what a waste. So we have a lot of work to do, and I want to I try to counter some of that today, this morning. Um, enough about who I am. So we got chuckleheads like this writing for the Wall Street Journal. Um, this was right after President Trump came to the Ohio River about a year ago and spoke. And we were very excited because there were barges in the background. The president's talking about infrastructure. There's a waterway. Uh, and then this article comes out, and this guy says this because most American taxpayers derive no special benefits from these waterway infrastructure assets. It's unreasonable for them to expect, or for us to expect them to pick up the tab to maintain it. This just like, ah, no. Now, let me, let me contrast what Mr. Wall Street Journal said to the, the head of the Corps of Engineers Civil Works Program, when Lieutenant General Todd Seminite. The Corps operates and maintains the largest inland waterway and coastal marine system that handled 98% of all U.S. imports and exports. That's a billion and some change tons. Look at this. 20% of U.S. jobs and a third of our nation's gross domestic product are directly linked to U.S. Army Corps of Engineer waterway projects and coastal ports. 98% of our imports and exports. So who's right? The Wall Street Journal guy or the three-star general? I hope that we can help you understand a little bit about. So we have a PR problem, right? It's hard for us to get excited about dredging projects. Yay, coming. Why no one attends dredging project uh, ribbon cutting ceremonies? And so we have a PR because we, we don't have really any opportunity to say, hey, come, come see our new lock and dam. Come see our new dredge project we spent a million dollars on and people come out. No, it's not sexy, right? So we have to do stuff like this. We have to go and we have to un make people understand what we're about. So let's talk about other, other business lines. You're going to hear a lot about um, tonnage and ag and those things that you understand. But let's just piece it apart. It's not just navigation. It's a multi-purpose system. So we have a hydropower component. The Corps operates, I believe, eight hydropower systems. Uh, and there's a total of 15 on the Arkansas River, generating power for around 10 million customers. I've got 8 million on there. That's actually a net positive return to the Treasury, $37 million a year. Now, it did take about 400 years for that $37 million a year to pay back the $1.2 billion. But hey, how many federal investments actually have a net positive return to the Treasury every year? This one's paying its way. What else? Flood control. Ah, now we're getting to some big numbers. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers estimates that the damages prevented to the surrounding states because of our system through 2015 floods is nine billion dollars. Now that 1.2 billion is looking pretty good investment, right? Now you have a nine to one almost uh, return on your investment just on flood control. This is from the December 15th, 2000. That's Lake Texoma. Um, help me out. Is this Eufaula? I think that's Lake Eufaula. And I know that this is grand and this is all in, in 2015. We had amazing record flooding and, and high rainfall. So Man, flood control is a big, big part of what our system provides. Recreation. Maybe that's not a big deal to Kansas, but to the states of Arkansas and Oklahoma. What's the value of Tulsa hosting Bassmasters a couple of years to bring in Bassmasters tournament to Tulsa? We certainly could not have done that without the reservoirs upstream and, and dams and locks and dams and navigable waterways that we have. So there's a benefit there. There is a conservation component. I'm an engineer, so I'm not supposed to care about that stuff. I'm supposed to be the guy that wants to push trees down. But we do love the benefits that come from having a river that has water in it all the time. You want to see what a river looks like that, that doesn't have 
control structures go to Tulsa and look at the Arkansas River or the Arkansas. I lived in Wichita for eight years. It took me about 10 to get where I could say Arkansas again. Um, <laughs> this is the least tern. It was an endangered species. We used dredge spoils to create habitats for them. I think I might have. Nope, I took it out for brevity. Water supply. The Corps of Engineers produces about 6.5 billion gallons of water every day off of our, uh, that's actually nationwide, not just our system. I couldn't find a, a uh, specific to the McCarns. Um, there's some 17 stats, talks about imports, exports, soybeans, 48 million bushels, wheat exports, 38 million bushels. Dee Dee told you more than half of that's coming out of your state. Okay, it just is. Um, 56,000 full and part-time jobs supported by the waterway. Uh, transportation savings, 12 million tons annually. It's a, it's a great, great story. Um, and I think, I think you, I hope you understand that 1.2 billion was a great investment. Um, the navigation component uh, is where we live. I want to switch real quickly and I'm going to give up my, my position on the floor. Dee Dee already went through this. She stole my thunder. Three rivers, non-routine maintenance, 12 foot channel. She talked about the three rivers. That's the biggest critical. It, it has the potential to shut us down with one major rainfall, one major flood event. She talked about that. We'll move on. Friday number two is just non-routine maintenance. So we got, we've gone from a nation and this is not just the waterway. This is nationwide, our infrastructure policies. We don't have a, really a, a, even a transportation program of note in Oklahoma uh, that looks long range. Actually, Oklahoma's getting better and doing a good job on their infrastructure, but um, we're not investing in those infrastructures that pre generations before us built. Um, so instead of preventative maintenance, we've gone to a culture of fix as fail, right? We wait till something breaks or it's about to break. The critical maintenance, which is somewhere around $140 million, that definition by the core means it has a 50% probability of failing within the next five years. I'm going to say that again. 50% chance of <coughs> failing within the next five years. That's how it gets on their list that says critical. And today there's about 140 million of that. It's things like the, the bearings that sit under the, the gates that swing. That's a pencil ball. The gates themselves. You know, water is a great solvent. It'll dissolve anything given enough time, right? So those are the kind of issues that we face is just 50-year-old infrastructure that stays wet all the time. You have to fix it. You have to maintain it. You have to put it back together. Tainer gates that control the water elevation, things rusting, falling apart. These are the things that we're talking about with critical maintenance. Um, just a real quick diagram of a lock and dam so that you can understand the many components, the hydrology, the hydraulics. The, the, we call these the miter gates. That's the lock chamber. Um, these are the tainer gates that control the water elevation and, and, and maintain that navigation pool. So there's lots of opportunities for those things to need maintenance. And don't forget, there's 18 of these structures between the Mississippi River and your products coming in and out of Kansas. I think I'm done. Any questions for me on that? Did, Thank you. Could you explain them quickly the condition of the Arkansas River backlog of maintenance versus the uh, upper miss of Ohio? Well, I think the, you know the whole nation's the whole nation's in this in this position. Our system is one of the youngest systems, approaching 50 years. Um, there are locks and dams on the Mississippi River that are still operating that are in excess of 80 years, and there's one that's 100 years old. Um, so we're in better shape than some. Um, but this problem, Steve, I don't know what you're going at. This is a nationwide problem. Here's the difference: uh, when you have a, a bridge out or a pothole on a major highway, you can detour, right? On the waterway system, we, have, we do not have that resiliency. We cannot detour. If we lose a lock and dam, that means everything upstream of that is now going to go to truck and rail. And there goes farming, right, Gary, in southeast Kansas. Any it's other questions? Where I was going on that, if I may, is that you know, we care the most about Kansas and our own system. And it's a non-locking river from St. Louis down. As long as we can take care of our own, going. We want to keep the upper miss going, which is a locking river, but first and foremost, we're going to worry about ourselves, but we're all in it together. I just want to make another comment, too, about how we are in this together. You, you know, it's important for you all to have this system, but it's important to us for you guys to move your product on our system. <coughs> the Corps of Engineers has, like, this big pie whenever they get their budget for the year. It gets divvied out between all these river systems, and if our tonnage goes down, we get less money to go back into the system. So it really is a partnership between our system and Kansas. Just want to make that comment. Good job, David. <laughs>